Ping Alo everyone! Welcome to Cordapia TV. If you're new to my channel, my name is Cor and I'm your best of nurse from Southeast England. In today's vlog, I'm going to share to you my routine as a day nurse in a nursing home here in the UK. So disclaimers first, what I'm going to share to you is based on what I do on a daily basis as a day nurse in a nursing home. So other nurses might have different routine from mine, but the purpose of this vlog is to give you an idea of what are the daily tasks of a nurse in a nursing home. Okay, so let's start. So after I clock in, the first thing I do is I check the allocation. So I have to know if the staff is complete so I can plan and prioritize things to do for the day. And also, I have to check if there is a good skill mixing of the care staff. So in our care home, the allocation has been done a day before, but it's unpredictable if someone will phone in sick, so leaving you with short staff. So after I check the allocation, I do my room checks. So I go room to room to check the state of the residents and their room. So safety is a top priority in a nursing home. So I have to make sure that the residents are well and they're not on the floor or they don't have any injuries when I start my shift. So in checking the state of the room, what I mean by this is making sure that the call bell is within the reach of the resident. And if there is a laser sensor motion device, I have to make sure that it's triggered and functional. Also, if the resident has bed wheels in place, I have to double check if it's really in place and it's intact. Lastly, I have to make sure that the room is clean and clutter-free. So after I do my quick rounds, I receive the handover from the night staff. So our handover starts quarter to eight and it is paid. So after receiving the handover, we will have a short team huddle. So I will give the care staff an update about the resident, especially if there are changes with their care. So it is also a chance for us to plan and delegate tasks with the help of the senior carers. So for example, um, we will prioritize the resident who has a scheduled appointment for the personal care so that they will be ready before the transport collects them. So after the short team huddle, I will disinfect my workplace, of course. And then the next thing I do is I check my diary. So this is equivalent to what we call in the Philippines as endorsement book. Oh, you buy the ink. Sanitize. I'm negative, so it's sanitize. <laughs> <coughs> Luckily, we're not short today or else my legs, you know, I'm very tired last night. So I have to look for urgent tasks to do and check which resident has a scheduled healthcare visit and who is going out for an appointment. So including in the diary are medication follow-up, making referrals, and necessary updates. So after that, I then go to my computer to check for the bowel movement charts. So this helps me to identify whom to give laxative medications during my morning medication rounds. And then after that, I go to the clinical room to check and record the fridge and air conditions temperature, making sure that they are within the ideal numbers. Also, I do quick tidying and then I prepare my medication trolley ready for the medication rounds. During the medication rounds, the nurses must not be interrupted, not unless during emergency situation. But you have to be sensitive on what's going on on your floor. So if I see that the carers are still completing with the personal care, I help with the resident's breakfast while I'm giving the morning medication. But if we have staff to facilitate the breakfast, then I can go on with my medication rounds. So if there is complete staff and there are no interruptions, I start my medication rounds at quarter past eight and then I finish at half nine. But if I have to help with the breakfast, then 
I usually finish at 10 a.m. or half 10. So after doing my morning medication rounds, I will go back and check my diary to complete my task for the day. So one of the things that is listed in my diary is to update the resident of the day. So the resident of the day is the assigned resident that needs to be reviewed and updated. So from the risk assessments, care plans, and any other related charts and forms. Other tasks that are commonly written in the diary are wound dressings, ordering medications, sending referrals, what else? Booking transport for any outpatient appointments, and updating families or the next of kin. So before noon time, we have a quick catch up with our home manager or the deputy manager to discuss concerns and to relay any updates. So by 12 noon, the lunch of the resident starts and that is also the time for the afternoon medications. Prior to starting my afternoon medication rounds, I double check that all residents have received their meals, especially those residents that stay in their rooms. So in my unit, there are only few residents with afternoon medications. So if my diary is not that hectic, I am able to assist residents with their lunch. So after lunch is sorted, usually the carers will do their pad change and repositioning. So by half one or two o'clock, I take my one hour lunch break. So supposedly I have 20 minutes of break in the morning and 40 minutes lunch break, but I don't usually take a break in the morning. So I prefer having all my breaks at once. During my lunch break, I still have to bring with me my work telephone just in case there are phone calls from healthcare professionals or from families or if there are visitors that are due for um, lateral flow testing for COVID-19. After my lunch break, I continue completing my to-do list, like doing the updates of the care plans and doing the wound dressings. At around 5 p.m., I start with my tea time or supper medication rounds. So just like the morning and lunch medication rounds, if I have enough time, I usually assist the residents with their supper. Once I finish my medication rounds, I usually review the medication charts from top to bottom to ensure that there are no gaps or missed medications. Afterwards, I complete all the necessary documentations in my shift, including the handover. By 7 p.m., I gather my care staff for a unit meeting. So I relate to them updates, and then we discuss matters concerning about the resident, like skin changes, mobility, or appetite changes. So the unit meeting is a good avenue to remind the carers if there are inconsistencies with the care, but most especially, it is a two-way discussion between the nurse and the care staff to improve the delivery of care. So usually seven in the evening is already quiet in our care home, not unless there are emergencies like falls or any other type of incidents. So after the unit meeting, I tidy my nurse's station and the clinical room and I prepare my handover sheet. And then the last thing that I do is I do my final checks of the residents and their rooms to make sure that they are all safe and well. Then it's home time, so we'll just wait for the nice staff to arrive to do our handover and then clock out. For your information, completing the tasks in the diary is not only the job of the day nurses. Other non-urgent things can be endorsed to the nice staff. That is why prioritization is crucial. Also, you should be flexible because sometimes your routine can be changed, especially if there are unexpected turn of events like one resident becomes unwell, if there are unannounced healthcare visits, incidents, several phone calls from healthcare professionals and families, and so on and so forth, believe me. So always be prepared for surprises. Do not get frustrated when you're unable to accomplish your tasks, okay? So hopefully you have learned something from this blog for the day. And if you have any questions or any suggestions for my vlog, don't be shy, comment down below in the comment section. So, I'll see you soon guys. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do like and subscribe and share. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye!